This is the Uniheart, designed and produced by Vic Lin at Work Tough Gear. If you're interested in hearing more about this Kephart inspired knife, keep watching. Just before we get started, I do want to thank Vic at Work Tough Gear for sending out the Uniheart so that I could share it with you. So what we'll do as always is I'll bring the camera in a little closer. We'll focus in on the knife. I'll go over its specifications as well as its design. And then of course, we'll do some demonstration. Now, just before we take a closer look at the knife itself, let me quick bring the sheath back in. We'll take a look at that. So as with all of the sheaths done by Vic at Work Tough Gear, it is just perfect. Done in Kydex, of course, and this case, a nice olive green color. You can see where the attachment is for the belt on the back of the sheath. The webbing that goes up to your belt, secured both with nylon or Velcro, I should say, and a dome snap, making it very secure and, of course, easy to get on and off of your belt. Let's bring the knife back in and check for retention goes in so nice right no looseness no rattle I wouldn't expect it of course and it's not going to drop out it's not coming out unless you want it to all right let's put the sheath aside bring the knife back in now I'm going to go over the specifications and I will be putting them in the video description for your reference so let's go through that now so overall length from pommel to tip 9.5 inches or 241 millimeters blade length is four and a half inches 114 millimeters blade thickness is 0.157 of an inch or four millimeters. Weight for the knife by itself, 8.5 ounces, 242 grams. If you add the sheath in, you get 10.7 ounces or 200 and, uh, or sorry, 303 grams. We'll go into design of the knife in a moment. We'll just finish off with the blade steel, which is the SK85 that Vic uses on a lot of his knives. A high carbon steel hardened to between 56 and 58 on the Rockwell scale. And you can see it's done in an acid wash, I believe they call that, on the outside of this. And now we'll just move down to the grips. This is Vic's design that he puts on all of his knives and this is a machined g10 two-tone an orange and a green and it has that i believe it's called a gator finish on it it's not aggressive but it is helps to really nicely secure the knife in your hand and those are affixed to the knife with allen bolts right here of course i'm just going to start with the design right here with a few, one more feature which is it does have the recessed lanyard hole like most of the designs have now with just a little bit of paracord of course now i said it was a kephart or inspired knife so of course the knife made famous by horace kephart copied or at least in, imitated, if you will, for by so many other makers. This is Vic's interpretation of it. It is a modern interpretation using modern materials. It does pay homage to the original and it shares a number of the features, but there is some departures on it as well. So it is listed on the website as a full flat grind. It's not quite a full flat grind. There's just a little bit of a flat, probably between an eighth and a quarter of an inch right at the top. Functionally, it's a full flat grind. I just wanted to make sure that I pointed that out because, you know, I can be a little fussy about what it's called, I guess. And it is a spear point with a center point, which is center line on the handle. And that's very true of the Kephart design knife as well. Now, here is an interesting thing to show. And this has a swedge on the forward part of the knife and it doesn't run full length. Now, what's, why I say that's interesting is I looked into the Kephart knife a little closer in its design. Now, one of the things you need to know, of course, is this knife was made from stock removal. You start with a piece of uh, steel that looks like this knife and you grind off everything that you don't want on it and then you put it into heat tree. It's done just the opposite when it comes to the original Kephart. They were hammered into shape and then any final work would have been done with files. As a result, there are some characteristics to the design of the knife that you isn't easily replicated in a knife made from stock removal like this. For instance, most people will look at the Kephart knife and think it is a full flat grind from top to bottom. Functionally, again, it probably is. But in fact, the widest part of the knife is not at the spine, but just below the spine, along here somewhere. And that's as a result of the hammering. What that does, it brings a thickness, not at the center point, but just above it, out towards the edge so you get an extra thick tip on it. And that's, well, not extra thick, but a stronger tip is probably the best way to say it. 
The other thing it has, and you have to look close to see it, it has a full length switch from the tip all the way back to, not quite all the way back to the handle, but most of the way back. So this is where Vic did bring a switch into this design, but it is not quite like the original is. Uh, functionally, it you know probably serves the same thing, of course. Now, what else can I tell you about the knife? Of course, it has a very, very sharp spine, as you see when we get to the scraping as well. Now, the grips are quite the departure from the original Horace Kephart. As I mentioned, this is Vic's design on his grips. This is what he used on all of his personal knife designs. And it's, it's a really good design. There's no question about it. Anatomically, you can see the palm swell, both in this dimension and as well as the height through here. It has a nice curvature. It has guard on the front and a beak on the back. There is a bit of a swell back here for your handle, your hand, and it holds on, you know, just feels really, really comfortable. And that's what you would expect, of course, from Vic's designs. It does have thumb scallops here. I will pass a few comments on this de handle design as far as my hands and using it when we get to doing some of the demonstrations. The only th other thing I want to say about the handle design is that it really is quite a bit of a departure from the original, which is more of the flat-sided broom handle, you know, very traditional, no special groove or anything else, just a little bit of a nice ramp at the front on the original design. Other than that, this is quite a bit different in the handle area. All right, that's enough about the design itself. Let's do some demonstrations. Okay, as far as batoning goes, you know, keep it realistic. This is not a big knife. It's not an especially thick knife. So I'm not going to baton anything of any large size. So what I've chosen is a piece of rock maple, well hardened. I'm looking at about 11 inches and I'm going to say just around two inches in diameter. It should be no problem for this knife, but I do see a few knots that, well, we'll see if it gives it a hang up. Now, the thing with batoning a full flat grind is is that it will baton it will split the wood but my experience has been is that it's a little harder to use a full flat grind than say something with a saber grind or even a scandy grind because of the wedge nature of those grinds means the wood just kind of moves apart very quick a little quicker uh, let's see what we can do I still have not found myself or made myself a better anvil for doing this on but I will all right, Put tap in, and there's the reason why I keep saying I want another anvil is because this one just wants to move on me every time I hit the, the uh, knife. There we go. Good solid rock maple. Okay, what I'll do off camera is I'm going to split one of these, or both of them down actually, into a number of smaller pieces that we can use for a couple of more demonstrations, including making a tent peg and doing some feather sticking. All right, first step in creating the tent peg is to create the L7, which will be what holds my guy line. So just a little tapping, doesn't have to go in very far, no more than a third of an inch or third of the depth I should say and just carve out the notch taking my time clean that out and I think that's probably enough right there clean it out a little bit more All right. There's the L7, that'll hold the guy line, but we still need to put a point on the other end. All right, let's put a point on our tent peg using the reverse grip. And of course, part of the reason for doing this is just to see how comfortable it is to hold like that and what it will cut like in the reverse grip and using the chest lever cut. So let's do that. Nice bite. And it's always a fun job doing this with rock maple. But point made, all right? There's my functional, if not pretty, tent peg. All right, I've taken three of the splits. Just taking a look at them to see how they'll do for feather sticking. Yeah, let's, we'll go with this one. Straight grain, a little bit of a curve off in that direction, but that shouldn't create an issue. All right, so 
I have two edges, actually I've got a number of edges, but I'm going to work on that to be the center of the wood and that would be the outside where the bark was. I'm going to start down the center, see how it goes. See now that's what a full flat grind does for you, especially when it has that convex, micro convex, polished micro convex secondary edge. It just, you know, just beautiful doing this with. Just a matter of finding your angle. Don't let it bite too deep. And work the edges. Yeah, very nice. Now I'm going to work on the outside just to see if the wood changes any. And it has a little bit. It's usually a little older on the outside, a little damper. Just the same. You can see the curls are bigger as a result. And there's pinholes from insects that have gotten into the wood. That's usually where my curls fall off as they jump over the pinhole or the, the hole created by the insect. All right. Not great, not finished, but a good start. All right, let's do a little bit of scraping. We'll start our scraping off with one of those other splits from that same piece of wood. See how well that does for creating some wood fuzz. Little collection board here. Maybe I'll go down this way. See, Vix knives that work tough gear are beginning to get the reputation of being some of the sharpest spines of any production knife on the market today and they remain sharp for a long time, which is a testament to the heat treat. Look at that, right? They'd catch a spark with no problems, but that's not what we're going to try and light up. We're gonna try and light up a little bit of fat wood. So we'll start with a little bit of scraping of fat wood. Is there such a thing as too sharp? Holy smokes. Small pile, but all I need for demonstration purposes. Bring that all together so it doesn't blow away in the wind here. Ferrocerium rod. Right there, I think. I'm going to try it a little further out on the knife. There we go. And it is windy. All right, I'd say this scrapes well. Let's wrap this video up. A few closing thoughts for the Uniheart from Work Tough Gear. So let's start with the knife blade itself. It is true to the original Horace Kephart knife in the sense that it is pretty much a full flat grind with a center point which is great for a number of things such as drilling into wood and even has enough belly to do some skinning with. I will tell you what that point is not great at and that is fine carving. It is just too wide across here to do fine carving with. Now, when I say that, it can still carve, as you saw when I did the L7 notch, but it just doesn't have that same precision for doing carving in tight spots that a much pointier blade would have. At the same time, again, that does make for a strong enough tip that I don't feel like I'm likely to bust it if I did a little digging into wood. Not something I would do with this knife or most knives of this design, but it's good to know that it is strong enough for a little bit of working on the tip with the knife. Now, I also said that it is not a great carver, but for another reason, and that is the spine itself. Man, this is sharp. It has its benefits, as you will talk about in a moment, but when it came to carving, the swedge up here, see if you can get a good look at the swedge now, you can see how thin it is right here. That's very sharp. And I'll get to how good a scraper it is. But when I want to work off of my thumb, off of the back of the blade and do some levering for carving, that actually wears on the thumb very, very, very quickly. So it's not great for that. 
But when it comes to scraping, uh, again, Work Tough Gear knives are beginning the reputation of being some of the best scrapers on the market as far as production knives go, and I think they actually compete with any of the custom knives in, as well. This does great, and this forward part actually is part of the best part of the scraping is right up here. Works well on wood, works well on fat wood, and works well on the ferrocerium rod. It just works against you when you're doing any carving. I don't think I mentioned, showed this earlier. Just a little bit of jimping here. Not a great amount of jimping, quite sharp, not aggressive. It's not going to bother your hand, but it's there in case you need it. It's not something I use because that's not how I hold on to my knives. Now, as far as holding on to the knife goes, Vic's design in his handle is so anatomically perfect in this grip pretty much only in this grip. And what I mean by that is, is once I turn the handle in my hand, now maybe the fact that I have the XL hands, but once I turn the handle in my hand, if I want to use the thumb scallop, which is a great addition, then I find it little less comfortable. A nice straight handle is so much more comfortable, something on the old uh, Puko style. This beak here and the forward guard, great for holding onto the knife, and the forward grip, not so great when you reverse it like this. Now, it can still be done, and if you're just doing a little bit, it's not a big deal, as I did. It was enough when I did the chest lever grip to put a point on that stick, but if I was doing that for an extended period of time, I wouldn't like it too much. Now, here's the other thing, and this is not going to be for everybody who uses this knife, but again, it is for me. It's not really thick through here. In fact, it's rather thin. That's just a little bit tiring on larger hands. When you're gripping onto it and you're carving forward like you would be with a feather stick, that can get tiring holding onto it to get, maintain the control over it. I have to constantly remind myself, loosen your hands off, Mark, or you're going to get tired out in your hands. Just hold it a little bit looser. It'll still work, but a little bit looser because I can find myself tightening up more than I would like to. That's personal, I know, and it's fixable. If I want to, and I may well do it because I do like this knife, is take the, the scales off, Allen screws right, put some liner material in, make it a little thicker through here. It does mean I'll have to modify the sheath or get a new sheath, maybe a nice leather one to match it, and uh, then it will be much more comfortable holding on to it like this for an extended period of time. Okay, those are my thoughts on it. I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on the Uniheart from Work Tough Gear. Please put any comments or questions you have in the comments section below. I will, as I mentioned, be putting the specifications and the links to where you can take another look at this, not only from Vic at Work Tough Gear, but all the secondary markets. They will all be in the video description as well. But until next time, get out and explore and take that pathless travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.